Hello and welcome again to another day of classes. Today we're going to be continuing with the Interchange 5th edition level 2, the blue book. And today we're going to be starting with the unit 15. As always, we start with the language summary or the vocabulary for this lesson. So, let's jump right in. Let's start with some nouns. Campsite. It's a place used for overnight stay in an outdoor area, usually divided into a number of pitches where people can camp overnight using tents or camper vans or caravans. Basically, it's the, the campsite is where you sleep outside, like in a countryside or any type of outdoors. And you start, you know, you have a tent and then you spend the night there and that is a campsite. That's where you're, when you're camping. A cashier. These are the people that, um, you know, take their money when you buy something in a store. Comb. These are combs. That's why you say comb your hair. Diet. A diet is when you choose to eat healthier or less food than you usually do. In order to have a better, you know, a better body uh, be, and be a little bit more healthier. Fundraising. The process of seeking and gathering voluntary financial contributions by engaging individual, individuals, businesses, charitable fund, foundations, or govern, governmental agencies. Basically, the fundraising is when you're asking for money because of a cause. Maybe you want to help, I don't know, the environment and you are raising money, it's a fundraising, in order to, you know, help the environment or to try to uh, to fight a, a disease or something like that. Honesty. Honesty is when someone is always saying the truth and being humble and always being loyal. Honesty are good things. Jail. This is jail. When you commit crimes, you're sent to jail. Owner. A person who owns something. The person that has something and it's his property, you can call them an owner. Maybe the owner of a, a store or a cafe, the owner of a house, the owner of a car. Those are the different examples. Predicament. A difficult, unpleasant, or embarrassing situation. Basically, when you're in a in a bad situation you know, with a problem, and this cow sure is in a predicament. Problem: a matter or situation regarded as unwelcome or harmful, and needing to be dealt with and dealt with and overcome. Basically, a problem is any type of bad situation where you need to sort things out in order to advance it to another position or to something else. Repair shop is a specific a specific shop that only focuses on repairing things, maybe cars, bikes, etc. Reward a thing given in recognition of service, effort or a, or achievement. The reward of working it's money usually. The reward after being a really good employee, it's being the employee of the month. The reward of finishing your career, it's your diploma and your certification, etc., etc. Trash. All of this is trash. Well, this girl isn't. Well, maybe she is. We don't know. We don't know her personality, but all of this is trash. Truth. That which is true or in accordance with a fact or reality. Something that is real. That you can uh, uh, you can check it and still be real. That it's the truth. Better better to be slapped with the truth than kissed with a lie. That is very true. Let's see some adjectives. Honest. Okay, we have the noun honesty, honesty here, and we have the adjective honest, free of deceit, truthful and sincere, morally correct or virtuous. So. I recorded the same thing of saying the truth and doing good things. Overweight. Above or above a weight considered normal or desirable. If your normal weight or the normal weight for a person like you 
it's 100 pounds and you are 150 pounds, then you are overweight. Selfish of a person, action or motive, lacking consideration for other people, concerned chiefly with one's own pers personal profit or pleasure. When you are selfish, selfish, it's when you only think about yourself. You don't care about the rest, only about yourself. That is selfish. Strict. Someone that is a strict is someone that likes and always follow all the rules. And make other people follow the rules. That, those are strict people. Usually your teachers are strict. I am strict as well. <laughs> okay, value, valuable. Worth of a great deal of money. Extremely useful or important. Something valuable. It's something that has a lot of value, basically. Maybe it's diamond, maybe it's money, maybe it's a statue that is really important. All of these are valuable. Let's see some verbs. Accept. When you accept something is when you agree it and you say yes to the proposal of the person. She's, uh, he's proposing her to marry her and she's accepting by saying yes. Or maybe you're dealing with a contract and you're accepting when you shake hands. Admit. To agree that something is true, especially unwilling. When you admit something, it's when you, okay, you don't want to say it, but you know that you have to say it. So you say, okay, yes, it was me. I admit it. Agree. When you agree, it's when you think the same as another person. Borrow. When you borrow something, it's when you take something that doesn't belong to you for amount, an amount of time. But at the end, you give it back or you return it. Catch. When you catch a ball, it's when you take it when somebody, somebody uh, throws it at you. Or when you catch a thief, it's when you get it. Basically, to catch is to, it's like to get something. Cheat. Cheating is when you are uh, doing um, dishonest things, for example, in an exam, and you copy your partner. Or if you have a partner, like, uh, you know, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or husband, or wife, and you start talking with another girl or, bo or boy, you know, any other person, that's cheating. Complain. When you complain, it's when you tell other people what bad things they are doing. For example, if you're in a restaurant and you see that your cake has, uh, I don't know, a cockroach in it, you, you tell to the server, like, hey, this has a cockroach in it. I cannot eat this. You're complaining at that moment. Okay? Confess. When you confess is when you tell a secret or you tell the truth to a person. Maybe it's usually, it's usually used with something that you previously didn't want to say. Demand. When you demand something is when you require something to happen. Like, we demand... A lot of money for the teachers. Right? That's something that we are requiring it. Okay? Deny. When you deny something, it's when you say that is... Well, basically, when you say no. Deny, it's the opposite of accept. If you deny something, you're saying no. I didn't do that, or I well, it wasn't me, or anything like that. Dislike. When you dislike, it's the opposite of liking. You don't want to be near or... Anything related with the uh, person, object, or thing, whatever. For example, they dislike each other. Oh my god, they are going to kill themselves. Disqualify. When you are disqualified, is when they tell you that you no longer can continue doing what you're doing. If it's a sport, it means that you cannot continue playing. If you're, it's in a job, it means that you cannot continue working. Divorce. Divorce is the opposite of marry. When you marry someone, you start uh, uh, sharing everything in your lives. But when you divorce is when that marriage uh, stops being. Enjoy. In interesting set of, you know, picture the divorce with enjoy. <laughs> but oh well, enjoy is when you're being really happy and excited about something that you're doing. It's when you are really taking the best out of something. When you are... Eating pizza, you can say that you're enjoying the pizza because you're eating it and you're feeling happy and good. Exchange. When you exchange, it's when you give something in order to receive another thing. 
Maybe you can give dollars and receive arrows, or you can give money and receive a a tablet. Find. When you find something, it's when you were looking for a thing and then you get to have it. That's finding something. Fit something in. When you fit in, or when you fit something in, it's when you put it in the correct place in order to be with the rest of the things. For example, if you notice, these and these two are connected, and this one it's being put between this and this in order to fit in, in order to connect with the rest. To forget. When you forget something, it's when you can't remember something. Rem forget is the opposite of remember. Ignore. When you ignore something or someone, it's when you're not paying attention to it and you're trying to, uh, you know, forget that that thing or person exists for a moment. Lend. To give something to someone for a short period of time, expecting it to be given back. If a bank or other organization lends money, it gives money to someone who agrees that they will pay the money back in the future, usually with extra money added to their original amount. Okay, very good. Lose. When you lose, it's when you it's the opposite of win, basically. If you're in a race and you're the last one or the second one and you're not the first one, then you lose. Or you can also lose weight. If you're running a lot and, you know, getting all sweaty and stuff, you're losing weight. Basically, lose is like stop to have or stop to be. Marry. To become the legally accepted husband or wife of someone in an official or religious ceremony. The opposite of divorce. Okay, here. Oversleep. To sleep for longer than you than you intended to, and so wake up late. If you were supposed to sleep until 8 o'clock in the morning and you were and you slept until 10 p.m., then you overslept like a lot. Pay off. To finish paying money owned for something. It's like when you're buying a house or a car and you were paying month and month and month, but then after a couple of years, you finally paid it off. So just finish paying it. Refuse. To say that you will not do or accept something. Okay? This is also the opposite of accept. Refuse. Reply. To answer or to react to an action by someone else. Basically, when you reply, it's when you... It's when you're the consequence of someone else's action. For example, if they send you an email, you reply with another email. If they hit you in the face... You reply with you hit, uh, hitting it or punching it on the, I don't know, on the guts, on the stomach or any other place or in the same face. When you reply is when you are given the consequence of an action made, made to you or to another person. Save. To stop someone or something from being killed, injured or destroyed. Also to keep something, especially from money, for use in the future. Okay, when you save someone... It's when it's like it's, uh, it's when you stop someone or something to being killed or injured or destroyed to have to you stop uh, someone of being in a bad place. But it also means to store something, to have something and keep it for a long time in order to use it in the future, like money. You can save money or you can save someone's life. Spend to give money as a payment for something or use time doing something or being somewhere, okay? A spend as is similar to save in other situations. If you save money, it's when you keep the money. If you spend money, it's when you use the money to buy things. But you can also spend other things other than money. You can spend time, for example. Spill. To cause to flow, move, fall, or spread over the edge or outside the limits of something. Basically, if you have a cup and the liquid starts going out, you, that's called a spill. It's spilling. Text. To send someone a text message by phone. Very good. Trust. To believe that someone is good and honest and will not harm you, or that something is safe and reliable. If you trust something, it's like you think no, nothing bad is going to happen to you with related to that. For example, you can trust 
your parents because they will not try to do things that are bad for you. Well, most of them at least. Warn. To make someone realize a possible danger or problem, especially one in the future. So basically when you warn someone, it's like telling you, hey, things are going to be really bad if you continue doing this. For example, if you're going on a on this street and you see this sign that is warning you that the street is covered in ice, then you should be wary. Okay, let's see some adverbs. Meanwhile, until something expected happens or while something else is happening. Basically, you say meanwhile while because it's while this is occurring in another place, this other thing is occurring. For example, we are now uh, what you are watching this video, I'm recording the video, but meanwhile in Walmart there is a guy, uh, you know, with an alligator going like nothing's happening. A straight, continuing in one direction without being or curving, bending or curving. Basically something is straight, it's something that goes in a simple line, like this. Or like the straight hair that is not fuzzy or curly that goes like this. It goes in a straight line. Okay, very good. We're gonna come back here when we get to the grammar for today. But that's been everything for the vocabulary. Okay, let's jump right in with the um with the with the with the book. Okay, so we have the unit 15. I wouldn't have done that. Hmm, interesting phrase. In this unit, we will be discussing imaginary situations. We're going to discuss difficult situations as well, but that's going to be on the next uh, video. But in this one, it's going to be imaginary situation. I wouldn't have done that. Mm, they go hand by hand. And we're going to be seeing this with the grammar. But to start, we're going to be seeing this snapshot. Okay, so we have three different stories. Let's read them. Florida, Florida mom caught being honest. Nancy Bloom was caught on the security camera entering a convenience store while the owner was out to lunch. The door was unlocked, so Nancy walked in with her son, picked up some ice cream, and left the money on the counter. So she could have, you know, steal that ice cream, but no, she was honest, and she just leave, uh, left the money inside the, uh, on the counter, and that's it. That's really nice. Everybody should do this. Honesty, it's is its own reward. After driving for 20 miles to return a wallet lost in a park, Kate Moore gets only a half-hearted oh thanks. So imagine that you found a wallet and you're looking for the person you're driving 20 miles, like 25 kilometers to in order to return the wallet and when you give it to the person it's like oh oh thanks and that's it and it's like my time, the gasoline that is spent Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Next one. Homeless man finds $40,000 and turns it in. When Tom Hart found the backpack full of cash, he didn't think twice. He took it straight to the police. After reading Tom's story, a stranger started a fundraising campaign for Tom that has already raised over $60,000. Okay, so he had the opportunity to give someone, uh, to, to give for himself, $40,000, but he didn't say, oh no, I, I I will not get involved with that, and just give it back to the police. Someone saw the the story, and it's a, a, food a fundraising, and he now has more than $60,000, so it's even better. Being honest is always better, people. Always be honest. Okay, now let's listen to this conversation that is going to be related with the grammar for today. What would you do? Hmm, this is going to be really related about this. Okay, so let's listen to both part A and part B and answer the question in part B. What would June do if he found $40,000? Okay, so let's listen. Unit 15. I wouldn't have done that. Page 100. Exercise 2. Conversation. What would you do? Part A. Listen and practice. Look at this. A homeless guy found a backpack with $40,000 inside. And what did he do? He took it to the police. He gave it all back, every single penny. You're kidding. If I found $40,000, I wouldn't return it. I'd keep it. Really? What would you do with it? 
Well, I'd spend it. I could buy a new car or take a nice long vacation. The real owner might find out about it, though, and then you could go to jail. Hmm. You've got a point there. Page 100. Exercise 2. Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What would June do if he found $40,000? So, what would you do if you found $40,000? Oh, you know me. I hate breaking rules, and I'd feel nervous about keeping the money. So, I'd take it straight to the police. I guess that wouldn't be such a bad idea. Maybe you'd be lucky, and the owner of the money would give you a big reward. Well, they say honesty is its own reward. But I could use a new bike. That is true. That is really true. Everybody would use uh, a new bike. But oh well. So what would you do if you found $40,000? Did you get the answer? Let's check. Well, June would take the money straight to the police, as well as the homeless guy. But the only thing is that if it was a regular person that found the money and just gave it back, I wouldn't think that something big would have happened. I think this is really surprising because it was a homeless man, someone that really needs money. But, okay, that was interesting. Okay, let's go straight into the grammar for today. Unreal conditional sentences with if clauses, or also known as second conditional. Okay, let's um, see this. I have a thing for this. Second conditional. Okay, we have three parts. Structure, usage, and examples. Okay, let's start by the usage. We use the second conditional, or the unreal condition in sentences with if clauses, but I would like to call it second conditional, with imaginary situations in the present or the future. These are things that are not real. These are things that, well, it's possible, but it's not the reality. So... Basically, imaginary situations, both for the present and for the future. The structure is that we use if plus the past simple, like when if it's to be, is used where, you know, have is had, jump is jumped, etc., etc. And then the present conditional, that is would or wouldn't or could or couldn't, and then a verb. For example... If I want a million dollars, I would buy a new car. So, you see, if I, always with the subject, if I want, in the past simple, want, where, would, want. If I want a million dollars, I would buy a new car. If I were you, I would quit smoking. I am not you, so this is imaginary. But if I were you, I would quit smoking. If I were the president, I will kill every. I will lower taxes. They would stay longer if they had more time. If I won a million dollars, I could stop working. Okay? So basically, you're using this for different imaginary situations. Okay? So you can also use it uh, in the second way. Like, you can start with this and then you don't need to use the comma. I would lower taxes if I were president, or if I were the president, coma, I would lower taxes. The same with his. They would stay longer if they had more time. If they had more time, coma, they would stay longer. Both of them works. Okay? You see, it's really, really, really simple. Let's see the ones in the book. So we have this, the imaginary situation with a simple past. If I found... $40,000, and then we can say the possible consequence. Would, with using would, could, might, and then the verb. I would keep it. I wouldn't return it. I could buy a new car. I might go to the police. So, what is the difference between would, could, or might? Well, would is something that you expect yourself that you would do. It's like, you knowing yourself, you would do this in this situation. Could is something that it's possible for you to do it, but it's not like you are completely sure that you're going to do that. And might, it's something that you probably are going to do, okay? But 
they are really similar one to each other. Basically, it's the imaginary situation and then the possible consequence. For example, we have this question. What would you do if you found $40,000? Oh, if I found $40,000, I would keep it. If I found $40,000, I could buy a new car. And it's the same as we saw, uh, as we told a couple of minutes ago. I could buy a new car if I found $40,000. I, I might go to the police if I found $40,000. In both of those cases, it is correct. It's just that if you start with if, then you need to put the comma in the middle. Okay? Very good. Let's say another example. If I had... I don't know, if I had a big house, for example, if I had a big house, I would invite my friends every day. That's an example. As you notice, we use the verb in past, okay? I hope that you understand this part. And if you do, let's complete this small, well, it's not so small, but it's a really good exercise about this. Complete this conversation and then we're going to check, okay? So take your time to complete it and then we'll check. Okay, you finish? Let's check. Okay, so number one. What would you do if you lost your sister's favorite sweater? Of course, I'd buy a new one. Or I would buy a her a new one, if both of them are correct. Apostrophe D means would. If you had three months to travel, where would you go? Oh, that's easy. I'd fly, or I would fly, to Europe. I've always wanted to go there. If, you, if your doctor told you to get more exercise, which activity would you choose? Um, I'm not sure, but I think I'd go jogging two or three times a week. Would you break into your house if you locked yourself out? No way. If I didn't have another key, I'd ask a neighbor for help. If your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't like, would you say something? No, I wouldn't say anything. I'd mind my own business. Be like this, people. Always be like this. What would you do if you saw your favorite movie star on the street? I wouldn't be shy. I'd ask to take a photo with them. Me too. Okay, very good. I hope that you have those answers because you understand this topic and it's really easy for you. Okay, very good. Now, let's go to the last thing for today, and it's a listening. You're going to listen to three people talk about predicaments, some really bad problems. And you're going to check which predicament they are talking about. So, you know, check marks. Then, also, you're going to write two suggestions given for each predicament, okay? So, take your time to re listen to this as much times as you need, and then we're going to check, okay? Okay, so let's listen. Page 101. Exercise 4. Listening. Tough Situations. Part A. Listen to three people talk about predicaments. Check which predicament they are talking about. 1. You know, I'm really worried about Chris. Why? Well, this may sound silly, but he spends too much time on the internet. I think he might be addicted to it. Really? Why do you think so? We went to the movies yesterday, and during the whole movie he was on his phone. He couldn't even take a two-hour break to watch this movie he's wanted to see. Then I suggested we go to the mountains this weekend for a hike, and he said no. He said if he didn't have Wi-Fi service in the mountains, he wouldn't go. Wow, that is pretty bad. We all need time away from technology. So, what would you do if you were in my position? Would you say something to him? I wouldn't tell him he has a problem. He wouldn't like that. I would continue to suggest activities that don't involve the Internet. He can't say no forever. Oh, I would be honest and tell him what I think. He will make excuses until you're direct with him. It's a problem that could affect his relationships with other people, and he needs to know that. 2. I just got an email from my friend Carrie. She lost all her money on vacation in Europe. Isn't that horrible? Yeah, that's terrible. Blake, what would you do if you were on vacation overseas and you lost all your money and credit cards? 
I guess I'd call my parents and ask them to send me some money right away. What about you, Zoe? Yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. Though I guess I'd probably sell my watch and camera. Or I might get a job as a waitress somewhere till I made enough money to buy a plane ticket home. 3. You know, something happened to me this morning, and I don't know what I should do. What happened? Well, I was taking a test in math, and I saw two classmates cheating in front of me. How were they cheating? Well, I heard some noise, so I looked over there, and they both were looking at their arms. Their arms had writing all over them. Oh, so they wrote the answers on their arms? Yeah, and then after class, they were laughing and talking all about it. What would you do if you saw two people cheating on a test? If I were in your position, I would talk to the teacher. I would tell him what you saw and ask him not to say that you told him. It's not fair if they get a good grade and they didn't spend any time studying like you did. I wouldn't get involved. I would pretend I didn't see anything. It's not your business, and sooner or later they'll get caught. Okay, very good. Okay, remember you can listen again as much times as you need. But for now, let's check. Well, the ones that they, the predicaments are that Tris has relationship problems. Nope, it's not that. Tris is addicted to the internet. Carrie lost all her money in Europe. And Sui saw her classmates cheating. Hmm, interesting. And what are the suggestions for the two suggestions for each predicament? Well, for the number one, she wouldn't tell him he has a problem and she would continue to suggest activities that don't involve the internet. She would be honest and tell him what she thinks because it could affect his relationships with other people. Okay, very good. Number two. He called his parents, he called his parents and asked them to send money right away. She'd also call her parents, but would probably ser sell her watch or camera. She might get a job as a server until she made enough money to buy a plane ticket home. Okay. Number three. She would talk to the teacher and ask him not to say uh, not to say that she told him, or he wouldn't get involved. He'd pretend he didn't see anything. Okay, very good. I hope that you liked the class for today. On the next class, we're going to be talking about difficult situations with the topic past models, okay? So, I hope that you look forward for it, but that's been everything for me, okay? So, see you in the next time. Bye!